Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you my latest knitting make, which is the No Frill Sweater from Petite Knit. So this is actually the second time that I've made this pattern. Uh, the first time around, I made a size medium and I didn't really pay attention to my gauge. I just used whatever needles were suggested in the pattern. And this time I made a size small and I did a gauge swatch first. So I actually was getting 21 stitches per four inches. Um, and I really love the fit of this a lot better. So I went down one size and I went down two needle sizes to make this sweater. I'll pop in a picture over here, which shows this one and the last one on top of each other. So you can see the drastic difference in the sort of width of the body. Um, this one I think is a lot more classic of a fit and it's something that I can see easily fitting into my wardrobe uh, once I finish school and start getting into the office space. So the yarns that I've used in this one, I have two yarns. Uh, the fingering weight yarn that I've used is Drops Alpaca and this colorway used to be called Pickle Grain and now it is called uh, Wheat Fields. I adore this color. It's like just ever so slightly on the green side of yellow and like I didn't know what I wanted to make with it but I knew I wanted this color so I bought these um and then I searched high and low to find a matching mohair to go with it uh nothing from the drops kid silk mohair really felt like it was a good match uh and so I looked around a lot and eventually I found something uh by Mayflower which is the super kid silk mohair so I purchased this off of Hobby. So it does ship from sort of like the Nordic countries. It's a, it took a little while to get here. Uh, but this Mayflower Kid Silk had something like 114 different color options. Uh, it is that same sort of 75-25% mix of mohair and silk. I will say that this one feels a lot softer on my cheek than any of my Drops Kid Silk. So I was very interested to get this um, knitted up and trying it just because I wanted to see if it was nicer on the skin. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive. I believe I paid about $7 a skein, whereas Drops I can generally get between like four and $5 a skein. So a little bit more expensive, but if I ever have a project that needs a very specific color, it was worth looking at. So the color that I chose is the color Tapenade. Uh, it's a little bit too yellow compared to my wheat fields, but I thought it was close enough and it was certainly the closest I had found all of the places I looked. So the resulting sweater I think is really nice. I wish it was slightly more green, but it's okay. Um, it's, it's definitely one of those like ugly pretty colors. I really gravitate towards it. Definitely a more fall tone, but um, I think it's absolutely lovely. Now, as the name implies, the no frill sweater doesn't have a lot of frills to it. It's pretty basic raglan construction. Um, the cast on edge, I did use the Italian cast on. This is, I think the second time I've used it. The first time I found it really, really hard and it took me hours to cast on. This time, much easier. So I don't know what changed. Uh, I do like how it gives a very clean finish to the edge of a cast on neck like this because it looks like there's no um, there's no line or anything that's like the one by one just sort of like floats over the edge. Uh, I do think it's a little bit, it's not as tight as, as a lot of my other necklines. So it, I don't think wearing it, it makes in it, you can see it, but definitely when it's laying flat, the neckline doesn't seem to like cinch in as much. So I may find as they wear this more and more that I'll need to put a little bit of elastic in there to cinch it up, but I will definitely use the Italian cast on again because I think it looks really nice and it's a lot easier than the first time I did it. Uh, and for the raglan, I believe the pattern uses make ones uh, as the increase along the raglan. I've gone ahead and done the KFB instead just because I sort of like the way that the KFB FB looks. I did have to like moosh around a little bit some of my stitches because obviously the KFB um, doesn't really set up the same way that the make ones do. I think I will probably make this pattern again, but I want to try it in some different things. I've been absolutely loving this sort of like marled look of the melange sweater. So I don't know if I just want to hold two yarns together and make another no frill sweater using that sort of like melange look. I also really like the look of the Marseille sweater, which is just um, striped. And I think it would be really nice uh, to, to knit this one like in a plain color with just some large blocks of stripes on there. 
I'm much happier with the fit as I had said earlier. I think that this is the type of fit that I really, really would like in my sweater. I knit this to exact length that it said to, but I think if it were for me, I might go another one or two inches longer. This hits me right about at my high hip, but I think it might be nice to have something a little bit longer if it goes into the colder months. Um, not a whole lot to say about it other than the fact that I changed the raglan increase style. But yeah, this sweater, oh, let's talk about the mohair. So this mohair uh, had a lot of knots in it. I would say about two to three knots per seam. Obviously I'm using cheaper end mohair. I expect there to be some knots, but that seemed a little bit excessive. Uh, in comparison, when I'm making a sweater with drops kid silk, I might experience one or two knots in the entire sweater, uh, not one or two knots per skein. I used about five skeins of the mohair and just over five skeins of the 100% alpaca for this sweater. So it is really, really lightweight and they end up having about I have three skeins less of this and two skeins left of this. I do find that on petite knit patterns, they tend to really overestimate yardage. And I don't know why that is. Because like I said, I did knit, I knit the body to the length that the pattern said to, and I knit the arms longer because I have monkey arms and yet I still have a bunch of yarn left over. So uh, I'm thinking I might hold these two together and make like a matching hat since I have so much of it. Uh, the other option is making some leg warmers. So I haven't decided what what sort of like accessory I want to make with my leftover yarn, but I'm definitely planning to use it up just because, as I said, I really, really love this color.